Have I ever told you the difference between being dark and being edgy? Being dark involves exploring the deepest parts of the human condition, hopelessly fighting against the inevitable or exposing the true evil that exists within mundane life. Being edgy, on the other hand, is trying to inject darkness where it doesn't belong. Being broody or intentionally keeping yourself miserable because you think that's cool. Do you want to take a wild stab in the dark as to where the dangers in my heart falls on that spectrum? Okay, that's not fair. There is one moment in the opening scene that is genuinely quite dark, where our protagonist, Kyotaro, fantasizes about violently attacking a fellow student who mildly annoys him. We all have intrusive thoughts, even unsettling ones if we're in a bad enough mood, and watching Kyotaro reel himself back to reality was a smidge too relatable for my liking. Unfortunately, this moment is sandwiched between two instances of the protagonist expositing to the audience that he is a violent person with a broken brain, despite the extent of his violence being fantasy and a fascination with true crime. Yeah dude, I watch Rainbot videos and occasionally fantasise about decking people who play their music out loud on the train, but I don't call myself a bloodthirsty beast for doing so. To be completely fair, the show does treat most of this like a childish fantasy. He even has a moment in episode 3 where he questions why he doesn't act as violently as his dark thoughts would suggest. One of these dark thoughts is how his first murder victim will be the female lead of the show, Anna Yamada. Anna is a bit of an oddball in terms of what I am used to. There has clearly been a lot of effort put into characterising her as an imperfect person which is very much appreciated. But a lot of these negative traits only come up once. Within the first three episodes, the narrative showcases that Anna is airheaded, bad at social cues, gluttonous, selfish, vulnerable to social rejection, and vain. That's a lot to pack into the first few episodes, but how many of those six character traits do you think come up more than once? Two. Only two of those traits ever come up again. I much prefer this over a blank slate character like post episode 4 Mahiru or Sakurajima, but we just came off a show that set up its main cast's characterization really well. Sure, I could only identify half the character traits in Jun that I can in Anna, but Jun's fewer traits are far better established in the same amount of time. Okay, so Anna is a bit of a mixed bag, but surely Kyotaro has to have more going for him. Despite the edgy rants, there's potential for a really cool character arc about someone who is plagued by dark intrusive thoughts and shirks social connections because of them. Unfortunately, the show does not hint towards such a character arc in the first three episodes, for three reasons. The obsession with darkness is little more than a gimmick. The story structure doesn't allow him any meaningful characterization or any chance to build a bond with the female lead and any serious moments are completely dulled by the show's severe contrivance issue. Let's start with that first point. Kyotaro's desire to murder Anna is stated early on. He even has a fairly disturbing internal monologue about the power rush such a deed would provide, but this is little more than edgy fantasy. There are a few moments in the show where Kyotaro wonders if this is the opportune time to strike, but you can never take it seriously because he always finds an excuse not to. Not even an unsettling excuse like the presence of witnesses or the lack of an escape plan, but a personal excuse like she's making a cute face. I speculated as early as his first murderous declaration that he was just getting his edgy fascinations mixed up with a general teenage boy crush on Anna. And without wishing to spoil the finer details, the show actually goes a lot further to confirm this theory in the first three episodes than I would have ever guessed, so credit there. But the protagonist's general demeanour around his dark interests plays a very minor role in the show. So minor, in fact, that I legitimately forgot he had these interests until the second episode started with another edgy rant. Although something that likely helped me forget was just how mind-numbingly dull that first episode is. You might wonder how an episode of television can be so monotonous that I could forget a detail as seemingly important as the protagonist wanting to murder the female lead. That little feature comes courtesy of the formula used by the episodes. Despite not having conventional title cards, these episodes are clearly stitched together with a bunch of smaller stories. 
And the amount of these stories that boil down to Kyotaro watches Anna do X is baffling. Kyotaro watches Anna eat snacks. Kyotaro watches Anna try to get recognized. Kyotaro watches Anna fail to keep water in a tiny container. All Kyotaro does in these scenes is make tepid observations that add nothing. So if you're into reaction videos, I've got just the anime for you. The problem is that this recurring storytelling device doesn't allow us to learn anything new about Kotaru, as he seemingly just narrates the obvious with very little meaningful commentary. And it robs us of moments to build the relationship between Kyotaro and Anna, because Anna doesn't even know he's there a lot of the time. And in the few moments where they do interact, it's either extremely minor, or it's Kyotaro acting like a buffoon. There are several moments where Kyotaro does something drastic in service of protecting Anna. Some of these moments are pretty cool, like when he prevents a pervy high school boy from harassing Anna and her friends by distracting him. But other times it just gets nonsensical. There's a scene where a guy is flirting with Anna and crosses the line into harassment. Kyotaro does intervene, as he should, but he does so by throwing his bike into a nearby river to distract them. It works, the guy lets Anna go so that he can investigate, but Anna doesn't use this opportunity to get away, nor does Kyotaru tell her to do so when he gets the chance. There was an opportunity here for Kyotaru to move forward as a character, or at least for Anna to notice any of the wacky things he's been doing for her up until this point. But this scene ends with zero advancement in their dynamic. It's just a scene of stuff happening. Unfortunately, scenes where stuff just happens are par for the course with the stories in this show. Especially with the contrivance issue. I've complained about contrivance before, most notably in my Red Hog Go for Angel Beats. But while Angel Beats had an issue with the dizzying heights its contrivance got to, Dangers of My Heart has contrived moments that are comparatively mundane, but far more regular. And I kinda think that's worse. As much as I lambast the magic engineer scene from Angel Beats, it's still kind of funny in how audacious it is. But Dangers of My Heart has moments that are less funny and more frustrating. Examples including, let's verbally create a catfight that the other people in the room will take an interest in, but not try to investigate. Let's have Anna fail to read the room for the first and so far only time of the show to create an awkward moment. Let's have someone verbally and creepily fetishize the girl he likes, in front of her, and she has nothing to say on the matter. All of these happen in the same scene, by the way. None of these moments is stupid enough on their own to be noteworthy, but there are so many of them that you just disconnect from the story. Speaking of that last contrivance, we should probably discuss why it's here. All contrivances exist for a reason, usually because the author wants something to happen in a story, but can't make it happen organically. But this particular contrivance comes from a different place. The point of this scene is to get this random side character on talking terms with the girl he likes. So the scene has to end with that happening. So why not just remove the weird fetishistic rant about larger women? Well, because then the author couldn't go on a weird fetishistic rant about larger women. Let me be clear, my issue is not that someone is attracted to larger women. My issue is that this girl, in particular, has just been fetishized to her face, and we don't get so much as a reaction shot. Something that struck me very early about the show was the group that this particular boy hangs out with, and how they were openly and obviously discussing some less than wholesome subject matter. It's a level of vulgarity that I'm not used to out of anime, and I respect it to some extent. Despite it being so long ago, I do remember being in high school, and while I was not the type of person to engage in these conversations, I did know people who would, even within earshot of others. But unfortunately, Dangers of My Heart more often than not crosses the line into fetish pandering, going beyond what any high school girl would tolerate for the purpose of finishing the scene where the boys are trying to learn inappropriate things about the female lead and her friends. 
I also get some fetishy vibes from Anna's design. The slender frame and large bust are standard for anime, but the fact that she has about a foot on the protagonist takes us into fetish territory. No, I don't mean that kind of foot on the protagonist, put it back in your pants. I could say that the perv pandering is kept to a minimum, with the few instances clearly being naturally worked into the story, but that's slightly less than the bare minimum. You don't get points for that. It also doesn't get any points for its interesting points of conflict, as most of these end with disappointing resolutions. We get a moment where Kyotaro wonders to himself why Anna is always snacking on her own, despite having close friends. This is actually an interesting question, with a myriad of potentially interesting answers. Does Anna find her friends draining, requiring time to herself to recharge? Is this snacking emblematic of a bad habit that she's trying to keep hidden? Is there an even remotely interesting answer to this mystery? Nope. It turns out she eats alone because one of her friends is allergic to all junk food, which is absolutely something one of her parents just made up, and doesn't want to make her feel bad by snacking in front of her. Yeah, sure, that's an answer to the mystery. Not a very compelling one, but it's there. Or there was the scene where the class was setting up a haunted house for their culture festival. While painting names on tombstones, the girl who was fetishized to her face, Honoka, paints Anna's family name. Anna finds this disturbing, and their classmates are quick to ask who is responsible for this. There could have been several interesting justifications for using Anna's name. It could have been a cute easter egg reference that didn't land, suggesting to Kotaro that he isn't the only one with a morbid mind. Or even Kyotaro's own theory that Honoka secretly hates Anna would have been a better explanation than the one the show gives. After Kotaro has taken the blame, Honoka re-enters the room and says that she was just writing some common last names and just so happened to forget that one of those names belonged to her classmate. Yeah, sure, whatever dangers of my heart, you just keep making dumb stuff happen to move along your mediocre story. I've heard it said before that the premise of a show has zero bearing on its quality. A show with a great premise can be terrible just as easily as a show with a mediocre premise can be a masterpiece. But a premise does have a bearing on a story's potential. A show with the premise of the dangers of my heart has the potential to explore the mindset of a disturbed youth ask questions about humanity's fascination with death, or even create an interesting dynamic between someone with these interests and someone without. And the show wouldn't have had to sacrifice all that much to accomplish this. Would it really have been so devastating to lose all the stories where Kyotaro is just an observer of Anna's shenanigans? To have his rebellious acts noticed by Anna to some extent, or to have her find out about his dark interests through the process of getting to know him. I know it isn't fair to judge a work by what it could have been, but I can't help but do so when a narrative falls this short of its ultimate potential. That potential hasn't been completely squandered, as evidenced by the penultimate moment from episode 3. But unfortunately, the wasted gimmick, the severe contrivance problem, and the lack of actual narrative meat bounce me right off. From ice cold to red hot, I give the dangers of my heart a rating of chili. I'll stick around for a little while, see if things can pick up a little with the episode 3 reveal, but I gotta admit, I think this one will be my next murder victim. I'd like to thank my patrons, Orion Tran, Lars Espen, Data52, Jaman5, Pixcalibur, Tyler Bennett, Tenka, Jeremy Pashik, Fireclaw, Chris, Luke Stewart, Swiss Cage, Gerald, John Lowe, the Mini Turtle, the Blue Crystal 770, Mu Feng, and Garen. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.